gave his heart to Jesus Christ. I've seen there are people that have never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. They see the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We have the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So God has been uh, moving mightily in this place. And uh, and the praise team has, has been doing well every night. And real proud of them. And the, the ministries have been cooking. And the meals have been delicious. And thank you for what you were able to give. And, and uh, we'll let you know at the end of this service if they're going to have any more tonight. Or, or it, may be, it may be done. But uh, we thank you for that. But look, we're going to get right into this. This is our last night. And I know we've got a word. Uh, this young lady came to us uh, at homecoming this past year. But before that, we already knew her very well because she was raised right up in this church. And she's like me. She cut her teeth uh, behind the pulpit. And cutting teeth means getting started in something. Okay, I don't mean she actually cut her teeth. <laughs> Teeth look fine to me. They're, they're great. Um, but what I mean is, she got started preaching in this church right around the same time as me. And uh, Scott Barnes started preaching around that same time as Shannon. Shannon. There's Shannon. Hey, there's Shannon. Uh, Brazil joined. My pastor's daughter. I mentioned her name is Mr. Pierce. That's awesome. Uh, but she got started around the same time, so we all just, you know, God just, uh, God just all started preaching uh, around at the same time. And, She's a fireball, man. She's got a word tonight, so I want y'all to make her feel welcome. She's home tonight. This is home to her. And she's come all the way down from, from Virginia, where she lives, and they've had six to seven inches of snow up there. And, and uh, thank the Lord she was able to get here and, and everything safely. But let's give a big homecoming style welcome to Katina King tonight.
run? Does anybody else love to run in class? Okay, there's a lot of people who hate to run. Does anybody hate to run? Okay, amen. I love to run. Since the time I was about 14 years old, it's just been a passion for me. Uh, we lived at the beach for about three years when I was 14 to 17, and I started running on the beach. And how many of you know running on the beach is not easy? It'll give you great calves, but it is not easy. So what I want to tell you first of all tonight is running is not easy. God has not called us to an easy race. Amen. But there is something good that happens in us, for us, and to us when we choose to run the race that he has set for us. It conditions us. In a spiritual sense. Amen? Amen? So I have to tell you this story, and I asked Joshua if I could share it this afternoon. Uh, again, I run, and I run quite often, and my son Joshua is quite fit. He's taller than his mom now. I've admitted it publicly. He can pick me up. He can pretty much toss me around like a sack of potatoes. And so one day I got this great idea. Joshua, why don't you go running with me? We'll just go for a three-mile run. <laughs> And he was like, okay, mom, because his voice has changed. And so we went out for our three-mile run, and I want you to know that before we got nearly on the trail, we live right on our wooded trail, it's beautiful. I look over at my son, who normally has it all together, and he is flailing like a baby elephant running. I've never in my life, I'm like, what, what are you, I was embarrassed, I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just stomping down the trail, and I was like, never going to work for him. And the farther that he went, which wasn't very far, he was winded and he couldn't make it. And his 40-year-old mama, I put him in the dust. <laughs> Woo! But that's not the end of the story. And so we get home and he looks at me and he goes, never again will I do that with you. Well, what I did know at the time was he was not only wearing shoes that were not running shoes, but they were two and a half sizes too small. And I began to ponder, what happened here? This is not physically fit. 13-year-old, he should be able to hang with me. And then not too long after, I was running with someone, because for those two people in the house that love to run, how many of you know it's more fun to run with somebody? And so I was running with someone who, I'm five foot two, is six foot three. So this person has a lot more leg than I have, okay? I mean, we can do the math on that. So about four miles into the run, I'm feeling quite accomplished. I'm like, this has been a great run. And this person says to me, you know, at this pace, I could run all day. And I wanted to shoot him with a BB gun. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm ready to get back to the house and get some water. I was done. And then it hit me. I figured out the problem. Joshua was trying to run my pace. Stay with me. Joshua was trying to run my pace. And when I was running with my running partner, I was trying to run his pace. Yeah. And how many of us know you can't run anybody else's pace and you can't run anyone else's race? Amen? Because the word of God tells us that the race has been marked out for us. Yeah. There is an individual race for us. Amen? So rule number one, your race is marked for you. Look at your nearest neighbor and say, it is just for you. Amen. I can't run it for you, and you cannot run mine, but we can run it together, and we can encourage each other. Amen? How many of us know we're always going to run further when we're running with somebody? Yeah. yeah? When you see people running a marathon and they're in groups, they don't give up nearly as easily. Amen? Amen. Because somebody else is beside them, and that competitive spirit in a good way kicks in. So I want us to think about that tonight. I want us to also remember that the Word of God tells us that we are surrounded. 
said, Lord Jesus, I need to get back home. And I can hear, anybody ever heard the rain coming? And I can hear the rain coming. And I'm on a wooden trail where there are lots of trees. And the wind was kicking. And I prayed, and I prayed as I ran the two miles back home. Lord Jesus, please help me. And I thought, what if a tornado comes? What would I do? I would have to lie in the ditch and pray until it passed. And I'm telling you, something kicked into me because I said, I had two boys waiting at home. And I had to get home to them. How many of us know you've got somebody at home that's waiting for you to run your race all the time? And I don't care how bad the storm gets, you got to press through and you got to make it home. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God tells us in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 and 31, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, yeah. neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power. Somebody say, praise God. He gives power to the faint. Amen. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Yeah. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord yeah. shall renew their strength. And they pray. They shall mount up with wings of evil. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I tell you, I get excited any time in the Word of God that I see the word but. Because what God is doing is He's saying, this is what normally happens, but now there's a but. And that means but to the contrary. My people are going to be a different people. Woman on a mission. So I go out 
And my lawnmower, my sweet push lawnmower, just started so compliantly that morning. I had knocked out the backyard. I was working on the side yard. And in Virginia, it's a lot hotter than it is here. And it felt like it was about 115 degrees. I said, you know, this is just going so well. I'm going to stop and have a drink of water. And so I turned the lawnmower off. The temperamental lawnmower off. And after I took my break and had my water, I proceeded to start the lawnmower back. And how many of us know now it was devil filled and decided it was not going to crank again? I prayed over it. I rebuked it. I wanted to kick it, but I decided that wouldn't be Christ like for my neighbors who were watching. And then I called MacGyver. Joshua is our resident MacGyver at home. Joshua, you need to come figure out what is going on with the lawnmower. And he came outside and he looked at it and he said, Oh, Mom, I don't know. And he went back in. And I'm like, You have got to be kidding me. I have a yard that's half cut and a lawnmower that's acting possessed. What am I going to do with this? And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Rest. <laughs> really? Like, rest? That's the last thing I wanted to do was to rest. But I went and I just lied down on the back deck because at this point I'm so upset I'm like in tears. I'm like, God, you want me to rest? Do you know all these things that I have yet to do today and you want me to rest? But how many of us know he teaches us in moments like that? And what I felt from the Lord was, you know, I was hot and I was sweaty and I was frustrated. But the bottom line was my plan wasn't going the way I wanted it to. Mm-hmm. And so how many of us know that sometimes on the race of life, when the plan doesn't go like we want it to, we get a little frustrated and we feel like kicking the lawnmower. Amen. And God was saying, if you can learn to rest like I want you to, then you can finish the rest of the work I have for you. Somebody better receive this word tonight. Because in order for you to finish the work that you have to do, you have to take some seasons of rest. Amen. Have you ever been to a play 
and they took an intermission, and you just go out and you kind of take a break, and you know, you go back in, you're ready for part two, amen? Anybody ever feel like sometimes, like, you need an intermission from life? Like, you're just saying, Jesus, if I could just catch my breath here, I'd be ready for part two. But we're not slowing down long enough to catch our breath. And how many of us know you can't run if you can't breathe? You can't. Amen? But it's so beautiful how the Word of God shows us here. The answer is in the verse. See, the only way that we will ever recover our strength, the only way that we can have an intermission in life is through Jesus Christ. Our rest is in Him. It's in Him. Amen. This word heavy laden in the Greek means to load up as a vessel or an animal to overburden. And it goes deeper. It means spiritual anxiety. Anybody ever been spiritually anxious? You know what I'm talking about. Spiritually anxious. See, sometimes we think we're supposed to be pack mules. Mm-hmm. We do. I do. Amen. I mean, I'm the first to say, I need to just let go of the superwoman cape because that has, that's gone. That's gone. But what does this look like? We're trying to carry more than God ever intended for us to carry. We're out, we're spinning our wheels doing things that God has never called us to do. And we want to know why we're worn out. Because somebody else was called to do it. Amen. Just because someone asked you to do something doesn't mean that the answer is yes. We need to spiritually discern what God has appointed for us to do in this season. Amen. We need to spiritually discern what grace am I running in this season. What course do you have me on Jesus in this season? Because this is what happens. We start carrying things and we're trying to run. I want you to see what I'm talking about. So we go, I've got my own, I've got my own stuff. You know, I've got my stuff. And then I'm going, hey, just let, can I just take this for you? All right. All right. I'm not stealing any money. All right. What do you got? Yeah, let me just take that for you. I can do that. Yes, yes. The answer is yes, yes. Here, let me get this. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Well, what else do you have over here? Yeah. Give me that. All right. Yeah. And I'm running the marathon. Of what? What? Like I'm running the marathon of life with all this? Anybody? This is what we look like. We're trying to run a race for Jesus, and we're so burdened down with mess that we're not supposed to be carrying. We're never gonna finish the race the way He called us to finish it. Thank you. 
I want you to look at your closest neighbor and I want you to say this with all the authority that Jesus Christ has given you. I want you to look at them and say, you cannot change one single moment of your past. We need to let it go. Amen? We need to let it go. Because I'm telling you, most of what the enemy is torturing you with, God has already said it is as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't even remember it, and yet the enemy is trying to torment us with it. And we're carrying it. And we're carrying it. And I believe tonight God has saved us that it's time to lay it down. But so many times, so many times, church, we look at other people and we still see who they were. Yeah, I'm a preacher. We still see who they were. Or we still see who we think they are right now. And we don't stop there. And then we look in the mirror and we see who we were. And we look at who we are right now. And how many of us know we'll never think that we're good enough? Amen. And we're no longer running in place. Now we're running back. Oh, yeah. We're running backwards. Amen. But what if we could look at us the way God looks at us? Yes, Hallelujah. What if we could change the lens that we're looking through? And what if every person that we encountered every single day we saw as the face of Jesus? Amen. And what if we truly realized that everything we did unto them and to them, we were doing it as unto Him? Amen. said it like this. Dare we judge a book while chapters are yet unwritten? Come on. Yeah. Should we pass a verdict on a painting while the artist still holds the brush? How many of us know God is still working in us? Yeah. How can you dismiss the soul until God's work is complete? Now think about this. What would judgment have looked like for Moses right after he killed the Egyptian? What would it have looked like for David immediately after his affair and the murder and the cover-up? And how many of us know that the Word declares that he was a man after God's own heart? Don't you tell me? I can't look beyond your heart. Or what about the woman at the well? Or what about Peter the day after the crucifixion? And the list goes on and on and on. Hallelujah. Yes. But the enemy will try to make you well on your past. He'll try to make you hold on to it because he wants you to stop running your race. He wants you so bound up with the shame and the condemnation and the fear and the doubt and the anxiety of your past that you are absolutely ineffective for the kingdom of God. Amen. And sometimes he's winning. But the word of God says that we are to throw off everything that hinders us. And I'm here to declare to you tonight that the devil is a liar. Yeah. I'm here to declare to you tonight that what I see is not what there is now. Therefore, no condemnation. I no condemnation for those who are in for a season. So I'm going to preach to you tonight. Because the condemnation that is in this whole world is long gone. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that verse because it says, therefore, there is now. That's a now word for us. <laughs> Right now, we've all made mistakes. Amen. Amen. We've all fallen short. But if we are in Christ Jesus, the word declares over us no condemnation. Everyone, everyone, every single one in the Bible, with the exception of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, was an absolute mess.
being confident of this, that he who began a good work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, he that began a good work. Amen. There's only one that began a good work in me. Amen. Amen. And the word of God declares that he that began a good work in you and in me will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. So that means that until the day that he comes, I'm still a work in progress. Amen. I'm still being sanctified every day over and over by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that means that he doesn't get up on me. Amen. When I stumble. Because he's right there to help me get back up and run my race. So the next time the enemy tries to come to you and discourage you and talk junk to you, you need to remind him that you're going to keep on running your race. And you're going to remind him that he has yet to see the finished work that God is doing with you. Look at your name and say, I am not finished yet. He's an awesome God. Second Timothy 4 verse 7 declares something that we all want to say. Amen. It says, I have fought the good fight. Yeah. I have finished the race. Yeah. I have kept the faith. <laughs> Amen. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to be running and fighting at the same time? <laughs> yep. What in the world does that look like? I think David gives us a beautiful example in Scripture. It's awesome. First Samuel. Chapter 17, verses 22 through 23 says, And David left his what? Baggage. Oh, I like that. And David left his what? And David left his baggage in the hand of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the army and came and saluted his brethren. That's good. David was going to work that day. Amen. He had a work to do for the Lord. Amen. But there was no way he was going to do it, Brother Daniel, if he kept a hold to the, the baggage. Amen. I want to tell you, you cannot fight effective warfare on your race if you're going to keep holding on to your baggage. You're going to have to lay it down tonight. Amen. I can't make you do it, but I'm telling you what the word of God is And it was after he that the word of God declares in that same book of the Bible that he ran out to meet the life. He ran to the battlefield to do what God had assigned him to do. Amen. You cannot run onto your battlefield while you're holding your baggage. I'm going to ask the praise team to come and just begin to play as we prepare to close tonight. I want you to know tonight, church, that the enemy is counting on something from you. He is counting on the fact that he thinks you're going to be too weighed down to fight against him. He's counting on the fact that you're not going to be able to weigh 